Thanks, Philip. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here, Mr. Lehmann. We have for them are. It's a very good show. Sorry, when it's too noisy. So my name is uh, Patrick Renkamp. I'm working for company Herrenknecht. We are also here exhibitor. It's always a little bit hard to be exhibitor and present in the same way. So you reached me my medium level. I hope it will work. Thanks for your time. I try to I try to show to you some uh, new developments for sustainable, efficient, and reliable mining. Hopefully, we can um, now introduce this new technology to you, and also address it later. So, what I was uh, very nice, or from my perspective, to have the news here in the same hall in the forum. So that's the future in mining. I hope. But maybe we focus on this uh, few slides I've prepared. Um, first of all, I typically for mining, I want to start with the value share. And it's just um, in terms of safety normally. So you could maybe or we could address just a few words that we could build in safety in certain machines means you have always the, the choice if you do something, if you excavate or build or construct, you can just build in safety. If that is not possible, for sure you can change operation. Maybe the last thing is what you could do, you could just put a, a sign and say, stop here, don't go further. So we try to make a difference on this uh, mining equipment, what we are providing. But um, that mostly, most likely we'll see in a few minutes, okay? So first of all, once again, that's the main subject. Thank you very much again. So we will um, focus on mechanized shaft sinking equipment for deep shafts and hard rock. And I want to, let's say, just pass through the developments what we've done and also want to um, let's say, try to explain where we are and in which environment, for example, these machines are working and also in which environment these machines could be developed. So for me, it was a very nice thing personally, but also for our team, I think we, we worked with, a, a for me, was my, from my point of view, with a very good team in Schwanau, up to 40 people have been participated on this program. So therefore, I thank them all. Some of them are sitting here for the action on this. So first of all, as I said, only a very rough um, summary where we are, what we have done, what we learned in this new environment, also for Herrenknecht. And then we go deep into this um, shaft boring cut -head. Finally, as fourth chapter, I will try to introduce what we have done to be um, yeah, reliable, sustainable, and uh, efficient. So therefore, yeah, that's maybe the, the key point and was also the interesting part here. And then we end up in a brief summary. So to make the short story long, <laughs> I could tell you a lot of these things here, but uh, the short version is for sure our tunnel boring machines. So Herrenknecht started 40 years ago are challenged by whatever, low overburden by water pressure and so on. As you can see here on the ship, which is hopefully swimming. So we, we handled that um, over the last 40 years and could even provide a variance of machines. Also, just to give, bring you some, let's say, details of the complexity what we are facing, but also in the last years, the diameter were expanding up to 90 meter was the concept, but I think the, the biggest one so far was 70 meter. So there are a lot of challenges, which are then also doubled by maybe face pressure, so deeper tunnels, but also maybe inclined. So we are today are facing a lot of different um, applications. And on top of that, also robotic are more and more part of it. So a lot of 
I, let's say due to the um, efficiency um, requirements and then safety requirements, more and more robotic applications are introduced. So meaning you need an overarching site on the things to develop the right tools. That is also one example, the last, for last one, sorry. But uh, I think that was also the innovation Bauma Prize, so for a continuous advance. So instead of having a step-by-step -step approach, we now could build rings during the advance, which means up to whatever, 30%, maybe 60% plus in advance rate. So meaning the world is getting more and more complex and finally, and even in our small tunneling world, world we have uh, connections, digitalizations, more applications here and there. So finally the owner, the contractor, everybody wants to have an insight about the entire system and then things like Professor Dr. Micho mentioned, data, sourcing and so on, that's all integrated. So that means we come to this big variance of different machines, big applications, and today we just focus on this small block here, which are our mining equipment. So we have, here you see the mining product portfolio. So actually the machine we want to focus today on is the SBC, which is a shaft boring machine for hard rock. We have also versions for soft rock, race boring, and so on and so on, and even especially tunnel boring machines in mining applications are maybe the way to go for the future. So just focus for the moment in the shaft boring machines. I hope you so far could follow me on my brief explanations. So you see a picture from Jensen. We have built up to three, or uh, main projects and equipped six or provided six tunnel boring machines so far. So there is, um, for example, the Jensen project. It's quite dominant. It's in Saskatchewan. BHP project with uh, deep potash. So 1,000 meter, several meters have been frozen. Then in the middle, there was two machines provided to the Slavkali project. It's in Belarus. It also was a greenfield project. So we provided the equipment with a um, German contractor um, within 16 months. And finally, on the right hand side, you see the Woods, you can see the Woodsmith project, which is currently ongoing. Two machines plus a vertical shaft machine and a tunnel boring machine was provided here. So these six machines we have built, four of them are finished. And we had a lot of gain and lesson learned from these projects. So only is it me? Ah. So oh, oh. maybe Philip, can you switch out the sound? Thank you, Philip. So what you see here, <laughs> that was a noisy operation here underground, and I just want to introduce to you what we are doing different with our machinery. So for sure, shafts are sunk in the past. You have seen the mine uh, scheme from Professor Dr. Michu. We, uh, we want to make things different, and we have done it so far. So we eliminated all the activities in the excavation chamber, or where you drill, blast, and muck, meaning we have built a machine which more or less automatically excavate the rock and even bring it to a certain level. Also, meaning no one has to be present in the excavation chamber. Also in the lining um, area here, then we can bring in yeah, rock support, like, like sharp forms could be there, or bolt and mesh can be applicable. And then finally, in the work decks on top, you see, I have all the components like big transformers, all the, the control units and so on. So meaning you see here the um, maybe the new model or our shaft boring machine in general versus the conventional shaft boring equipment which is also in a certain type of batching process meaning you will blast and muck and so on and that is maybe also the biggest difference so we would see if you see here on the list um, the difference in a continuous process so 
first of all, the cutting tools versus the explosives. That is, um, I would say, not rocket science. It can be. But even the tools which are uh, in or the toolbox is equipped with uh, let's st standard disk or, or pick picks since the last 50 years not so many things have changed so we made the biggest difference here with the pneumatic marking system so how to bring the material from the shaft bench to a certain type of the, or elevation in the machine where it then will be handed over so meaning overall, we could see a continuous process versus this batching process, and thereby we even double the advance rates. So you see uh, roughly three to four meters versus one, one and a half meter. Also, what you could see is that the lining and uh, hoisting, so everything which is then related afterwards to secure the shaft and to um, bring the material out of the shaft, there's nothing done. Here yeah, you see a nice picture from Belarus. That was a machine, nice machine uh, surface, and only to bring you in the understanding that is the extent of uh, such a project. So these are our two shaft boring rotators currently in uh, Woodsmith. And then here you see additional developments and so on. So that is the complexity which we are facing, and that all was leading to, let's call it some numbers in depth diameters, different shaft lining and so on. So this entire, oh, sorry, this entire takeaway, all the lessons we have learned and everything was then even shifted to the next machine type, what I just want to introduce to you now. So we were facing, uh, let's call it one issue, because the shaft boring road header, what I just have shown to you, could be also only used in these green areas, meaning the green area is maybe sedimental layers, geology, so mudstone, sand, yeah, and then you have maybe a potash or coal. No one actually wants to dig to coal, but um, you see the area is limited. So the, all the other dots are um, normal mines, copper, gold, and so on. And we couldn't even transfer our technology, all the gains from the previous jobs to these mines. So that was the key of it all. And we tried to develop something. And then may I spend only mm, two minutes on this slide. It's quite important because if so we are here on a construction fair so if you go now to one of the um, suppliers and make a call of uh, order call of equipment then you know what you get but in such an um, let's say big equipment related to the standard equipment you have to communicate way more and there are stakeholders owners consultants contractors and maybe equipment suppliers like us, uh, like us. There's a number of other guys. And the contractor, for example, becomes a dominant um, role. So if they are not convinced, if they are hesitative to use this equipment, the, uh, how you say in German, the coal will not fly. So everybody stays grounded and nothing will work. So you have to work on all the different um, yeah, it's stakeholders to start a concept and therefore we worked together with a German contractor and developed a certain type of wish list which is shown here. So we went with a diameter of 9 meter, had 1,500 meter shaft depths identified as most reasonable. The rock strength we limited to 250. So that is the machine we wanted to build. That is the way how we can, we can be sustainable, efficient, and reliable to generate um, all body access. Yeah, and also here, a target of six to eight meter a day would be a good number if you compare to the standard blind shaft operation. So from our perspective, from Herrenknecht, we built a team. Here you see somewhat like a big gearbox. It's um, starting all with the cutting process. The cutting more or less is, is uh, it's, it's fine. You see it in a few bits, but then you also have some other processes behind. So like the um, yeah, pneumatic marking, I just named it or put it on, and also the material collection. So 
it would be very nice to have a cutting process, which is perfect, but if you cannot get rid of them, cut material, you're struggling there. On the other side, you see things like the gripping process, you see things like the hoisting or shaft lining process, which are, I would say, not critical at the moment. So, the, as I said, the hard rock is our key, I would say, competence. We have currently the Brenner base tunnel in operation, the Gotthard road tunnel is going on. So, more or less, we know what to do. I would say all tools are on the table. We could select the best one whether it is, and on the left-hand side, you see a cutting disc in operation. So, meaning the cutting process is maybe not the critical path it could be, and that was quite clear, the material handling inside the cutter head. And that is the point where we maybe can focus on, but to start with the material handling process, only a few slides here. So, we had to make choices and so on and validate or validate them. So looking to the experience from the SPR, we already have a certain type of um, it's material cutting and even movement by the rotation of this partial phase um, cutting drum. We went with the concept based on water. So water is very nice. Um, you can push, even the rock has a certain uplift. You could be very strong and efficient and for our new machine, we have seen uh, selected this plummetic marking system, which you see in a bit. And uh, what you also can see here, we have here a V shape. So that was uh, the first concept we already developed 2014 for the hard rock thing, and even that was questioned. So the point is how the material will get into this one suction box. And that somehow, I don't know, there are so many cutting wheel shapes available. So we, I don't know, everything was built so far. So we selected something like a yeah, flat surface uh, cutting drum. The cutting drum is a steel basis for the cutting disc. You push down then with two and a half thousand tons to the rock. And, and the shape we can adjust to support the um, material flow. What you see here as well is maybe the, the best choice what we got for the pneumatic marking system. So it all ends up here with a certain type of suction box which will collect the material. Then we have a straight line to a suction tank. In the suction tank we separate the cores from the um, yeah, fine materials. We relax the air. If we have seven, eight, ten, five, four cubic meter collected, we will hand over, hand over this to the muck bucket. The muck bucket you see there, and then we will hoist it upwards. So meaning there's a process, but while we are doing this pneumatic mucking, it's a little bit like a big vacuum cleaner, we still can excavate. So meaning that was one of the first um, concepts we done, and now we had some questions, so how to make this cutter head reliable, sustainable, and efficient. And um, therefore, we went that way, the road. We didn't start any simulation. We haven't done any, um, let's say, computer things. So there was, um, a, I don't know, it was quite clear that even a simple uh, simulation could last forever, more or less, and even uh, be quite expensive. So therefore, we developed um, a little bit like a turntable. So we had a, a surface which could be then be equipped, or let's say we can place material on top of that, and then try which inclination and which whatever tool this material can activate to bring it from the outside of the cutting drum to maybe the suction box. And you see a picture, so on the left hand side there is the face, our tunnel boring machines are moving or cutting rock with the um, cutting disc, you have seen them previously like on the Brenner base tunnel. And these surface we then transferred to a um, concrete plate that's in the middle. And this concrete plate, here you see a footage, a video. 
So you see in slow-mo how the table was filled with a specific um, material. So we selected more than five different types. Then we equipped the sledge with different tools. And then the material was activated. We collected the material and we collected the material which was transferred and we, the material which was remaining on this plate was done by calculation, luckily. So we have done more than uh, 600 tests like this. The overall, I don't know, options have been up to, I think, 12,000. So out of these um, 600 tests which we have done, we then went the next step, shifting gears towards the suction box, so lesson learned. So we started with this equipment. There is a suction box, meaning if we now know how the material is moving, to a certain uh, point, meaning the, the, width, the material handling on the flat, hopefully that could be big enough as possible, how we can handle that. And therefore, we created this simplified uh, yeah, pneumatic mucking system. So we use a big fan from Kaufmann. We have done a big uh, OSC can, which was used here. Then we have here a suction box and here once again this um, artificial surface. So we placed material, so like um, different, whatever, kilogram, liters and so on. And then this sledge was moving here and we took in all the material. Here once again a few pictures I hope you could see. Here see maybe the fan, that is the inside of the container and then yeah, more or less you can um, understand the um, extent of this test. Also here we have done more than 200 different tests with different sizes and so on. And uh, I wanted to show you here a small footage. It could last a little bit. You see the crane is already moving. So, so it's really the point that when the cutting drum is spinning around, we, by rotation and penetration of the cutting disc, we get some material. Ah, now let's see the sledge is coming with some material. So when the cutting drum is spinning around, this cut material has to be recovered and pulled away with any rotation. So between, I don't know, 400 and 700 liters. Yeah, so that was the video you have seen a lot. Um, we changed shape, width and so on and then came to one good solution for us, which is reliable and sustainable. We then said, okay, that um, it deserves a certain type of explanation also for the stakeholders like owners, consultant and um, contractors. And we have to demonstrate how good this system is working. So therefore we have created out of an old tail skin, which is a big tunnel boring machine curtain, a concrete block and then we have placed a small micro machine on top with this more or less new modified cutting wheel, including an entire pneumatic mucking system like this. So you see uh, filters from CFT Kaufman, uh, blowers and so on. And that's more or less one to one a handover from the concept which we got here. Yes, and this um, system could then demonstrate that even the entire um, process. So you see uh, some drone pictures could work, so meaning we could excavate by penetration and rotation of the cutting drum, but also we could um, take out the rock cuttings, lift them, sorry the cable was for the batteries, not for the motor, it's coming. So we could lift the material, we could separate that and we have done so far up to, I think, nine meter of um, real shaft sinking in a concrete block. So concrete has got a rock strength of roughly, I don't know, 30, 40 megapascal, not really hard rock, but um, any, any client, any customer, any owner, contractor is more than welcome to bring his biggest, hardest rock. So here you see uh, some footage from the first cut. You see the cutting disc spinning around. They are also a little bit scaled. So at the moment we are in a scale of one, two, three. Yeah, and it was a suction box. Once again, so the machine is cutting and you see here then the suction box with the shape and we pull the material up. 
and have a nice cleaned bench. So only to um, summarize uh, the last. So we could, we have seen challenges. We have seen it on a, let's call it cultural thing due to the owner, con consultant, contractor. We addressed that. We, we created a demonstration kit, but we also created a solid basis for our decision how the cutter had later will look like. And therefore, hopefully, let's say if there are questions, we still come back to this database and say, yes, that's due to this or that's due to those things. On the right hand side, you find the overall concept of the machine. So a big, massive cutter head. Then you have here gripping cylinders. The gripping cylinders are supposed to create, a, let's say, counter bearing for the thrust force. So just assume here would be maybe two and a half thousand tons. The gripper has to be close to 7,000 tons um, pressure on the shaft wall to be a solid counter. Or Yes, so on. And then on top, you find the lining area where we can bring in same, all the lesson learned from the existing machines below it down. And on top, you got the workbench. So on bottom line, um, I think we are in a good position. We can, let's say, convey the message. Hopefully, as I said, um, we, we presented it to some contractors and owners so far, the response was good. And also the process how to develop no new machine concept was also um, yeah, um, promoted or how can I say, everybody was happy more or less. So especially the teamwork in our uh, company was good. As we said, no workers on the excavation chamber, all the other benefits of mechanized or mechanical cutting is done and that is maybe the thing at the moment the machine for sure is not ready it has to be adapted to all the needs of a job site which is a funny thing on such things so that was my brief presentation i hope it was uh, um, understandable you could see what we have done in the past um, i really Thank you for your attendance. Um, we are available in C3. All of my colleagues here will answer all the questions as well, same as me. Mr. Lehmann, please come to me. That's all. So if, if there are any questions, please. Um, if not, we are there. Thanks a lot.